What does an assistant superintendent do in construction? When you know the focus, you can do remarkable things. So do you really want to be able to focus on your role and have an impact as an assistant superintendent and really be able to win? And do you want some keys to really be able to impress your boss? If so, stay with us on this video. So first and foremost, assistant superintendents plan and execute work. So there's different ranges of responsibilities. So a field engineer will really make sure that they're enabling the craft in the field and fielding all engineering questions. An assistant superintendent will plan and execute and make sure that work is happening in a clean, safe, and quality manner consistently on the short interval. A project superintendent or the lead superintendent on the project will really make sure that everything from a macro level is being planned and prepared for the assistant superintendents so they can do their work. He or she will allocate resources, manage commissioning, manage procurement, and build the team. So the assistant superintendent is key when he or she plans and executes short interval work well. And so there's a couple of keys to this. Number one, the assistant superintendent will be what's called a safety presence in the field, meaning that he or she will not be off to Home Depot, will not be off getting materials in the office too much or in the truck too much, but they will be walking, working with, not like with tools, but like communicating with foremen and workers and ensuring that there's a visible, meaning they can see the assistant super, presence in the field to oversee and govern the way things are being done. So when I say safety or quality presence in the field, what I mean is that someone is watching, right? And so here's the key. Let me just do a little sidebar. I once worked with an assistant superintendent that was really, really struggling. He was a great guy, just absolutely fantastic, but struggling to keep up. And I asked him, hey, what are you doing right now? And the answer was, well, I'm writing a lot of RFIs, fielding a lot of questions, and I I listened to him, but I'll pause right here. By the time we got done with that conversation, I was like, hey, homie, you are doing work that the field engineer should be doing, right? And in some cases, I've seen assistant supers get too high level and start doing work that the project superintendent should be doing. What I explained to him was, we need you to be a presence in the field. That means don't get too bogged down and don't be back in the office too much doing what the senior super should be doing. Be a presence in the field. Because once you're not out watching and observing and checking and connecting, then things start to spiral out of control. And I explained it like this, and I do wanna say any kid analogy is a compliment because all of us love kids and respect kids. They're more pure hearted and loving and beautiful than any of us adults. But it's kind of like if you have your kids down at the end of the hallway in your uh, house and you stop hearing noise and it gets quiet, you immediately think as a parent, wait, what's going on? And then sure enough, you walk in there and there's crayon all over the wall. They get quiet when something's going wrong, right? That wouldn't have happened if I was watching. We need someone watching, enabling, supporting, and also holding people accountable in the field. So a safety presence in the field means that the assistant super is present and controlling the environment so people can do their best work. Same thing goes for quality, inspecting as they go and doing zone control walks. So if the project super is doing lots of planning and queuing up, you're doing a lot of planning and executing and the field engineer in, or project engineer is doing a whole lot of the answering engineering questions. So that's the focus. And so here's the outcome. Just like for these videos, like I hope they're done well enough where you want to subscribe to the channel and message me and say hi. Just like that's my intended outcome, which I hope you do, there are certain outcomes for an assistant superintendent. So let me tell you them one by one. Number one, Deliveries must be organized. Again, remember, the senior superintendent and the project team are queuing up deliveries, queuing up labor, queuing up crews, queuing up the contracts for the project site, queuing up the planning, permissions, everything else for you. So one of the things that has to be done is for you to make sure those deliveries are coming on time, monitor that, and that they're getting from the point of receipt to the point of install on the project when they are needed and for that logistical system to be working properly. So 100% the senior superintendent is gonna help you with the procurement log. But once they arrive on time, we need you to make sure they go in the right place once according to the visual map so that it doesn't move all over the project site multiple times and so that we don't waste money. Second, 
Make sure that crews are present, meaning we have the right labor counts, which is something you will check, and organized. Meaning, if you see a crew, that crew is only working properly if it has key things. For instance, if I saw a car, right, and I'm like, oh, there's a car, that's great. Well, if it doesn't have wheels, rear view mirrors, a working motor, or gas, it's not working properly. So I can't just be like, oh, that's fine, they have transportation. It has to be functioning. When you see a crew, your crew is not functioning unless it has the quality expectations, safety expectations, all of the tools, equipment, and resources that they need, and that they have a clear area, enough layout, and that they are installing it right. Meaning that they have all of the resources that they need. They're set up for success, right? Every crew, I just want to make sure that we're set on this, must have the labor, the tools, the materials, the equipment, the permissions, the layout. So it's the assistant superintendent's job to make sure, yes, the project team queued these folks up. Yes, they're here, but are they now effective in installing their work in an efficient manner? Third, are operations stable within the area? Is the area clean? If not, go to action. Is the area safe? If not, go to action. Is the area organized so that trades can really do their work? If not, take action, right? So we do not command and control people, but we definitely command and control environments. So it's your job, boots on the ground, to make sure that the environment is stable enough for these trades to make money and to do well and be safe. And so you'll always make sure that operations are stable. And number four, as a key focus, I'm asking you to make sure that your trade partners are set up. Now, that doesn't mean that they just get to do whatever they want. That doesn't mean we're buddy-buddy and they can walk all over us. Clean, safe, organized. Clean, safe, organized. Clean, safe, organized. Why do I say clean, by the way, before I say safe? Because if it's not clean, if it's so dirty you can't see anything, you can't be safe because you can't even see what's unsafe. I want clean, open, beautiful environments. Then, hey, is that handrail up? Is that snow fence up? Do we have tripping hazards? Once it's clean, now we can be safe. Once we've taken care of the value and priority of being safe, now we can organize and make sure that it's efficient. So clean, safe, and organized. Trade partners do not get to choose what meetings they go to. They do not get to choose whether or not they follow the project rules. They do not get to choose whether or not they're going to be clean. They do not get to choose whether or not they're safe and organized. So these are not things where it's like, hey buddy, I'll, I'll let you off on that. Superintendents do not anywhere in the world have the authority to sympathy vote a trade partner or foreman and tell them that they don't have to be safe. You don't have the authority for that. It should never ever happen anywhere in the world. They are The trades are expected to do that. And so you have authoritative and vulnerable leadership that is enforcing those rules in an environment that's remarkable. And then once that stable environment is there, you make sure, hey, what do you have? What do you need? How can I help you? Is the sequence proper? Is there anything that I can do to support your work? Then, once you have clear boundaries, once you have clear expectations, and once those clear expectations are being met, then I'm fine if you're if you're buddy buddy, but we need to make sure that your systems are always gearing towards the direction of taking care of your trades and the project as a whole, the trade and the project together. So one of your main focuses, once everyone is heading in the same direction, flowing together and following the same rules, is to make sure your trades are making money. Any superintendent, can run trades in the ground and spend a lot of their money and somehow accidentally get shoddy work done. But only the best can do it and make raving fan clients or customers out of our trades themselves. Number five, once you've taken care of your trades, make sure that the product is taken care of. You will inspect, like I said about uh, being a quality presence in the field, you'll inspect everything. As you walk through the project, you're gonna do what's called zone control walks and you're gonna talk to your foreman and you're gonna ask, hey, is this done? And use your quality visuals to actually inspect it and then say, hey, what do you need to prepare out ahead so we can create flow for you, right? But everything must be inspected. So please do not get any misconceptions. Superintendents do not just say, hey, foreman inspect that or field engineer inspect that. No, 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 no. The best projects with the best quality have engaged assistant superintendents that are doing the port checks with the field engineers, that are doing the overhead ceiling inspections with the teams, and that are actually accompanying, even if it's infrequently, the inspectors to actually inspect the work, and who always, where there's a zone handoff, meaning a trade is moving from one area to another, are doing a zone handoff inspection from a quality standpoint. The last step I wanna mention is short interval planning. And so what I mean by this is, yes, the project superintendent with the team and you is going to manage the 
master schedule and coordinate pull plans with you, obviously, of course, and your trade partners. I have to make that clear. And uh, he or she is going to help to facilitate look ahead planning. And you as the assistant superintendent will make sure you're really creating with your trade partners, the weekly work plans and the day plans on the short interval. So again, long-term planning, short-term, you're in the short-term. You must make sure that what you're doing in the short-term has flow and that it's vertically aligned with the master schedule for the overall milestones. That's your job. You don't have to worry about all these other places all these other areas and too far in the future, right? Maybe you do three or four or five or six months, but you don't have to worry about the whole macro perspective because you are executing on the short interval schedule. So you will definitely be a part of the look ahead planning, the weekly work planning, the day planning, the orientation of the crews and the tracking and adjustment of those schedule activities to meet the overall milestones. And so you probably expected me to go over things like, well, you need to uh, update the logistics plan or you do daily reports or you are in charge of uh, the methods of procedures or the impact notices. Totally fine. Like, hey, I have a list that we're going to give you in the description below that will link you to a scorecard for those details. But I'm telling you, if you want to impress your boss, take the long-term planning and preparation that you are given and execute well on the short interval and really hit that ball out of the park. And that is the way that you can make sure you're tying in with your project superintendent team member and your field engineer by allowing them to answer the detailed uh, layout and engineering questions while you make sure the short interval is working and that you have a presence for safety, quality, and production. Production's not out of there, right? And that work is moving forward at a very intentional and high pace. Not fast, not rushing people, but high pace. That is a way that you can become an invaluable member of your team and everyone says, yeah, I can count on so-and-so for executing this work. I prepare it he or she executes it and the field engineers are there for support. It's a perfect and beautiful team. You'll love it too. This is the best, one of the best positions you will learn so much. So really own your area. So again, I'm linking you to the scorecard. Please check it out and go dig in with that focus because it will bring you remarkable results. On we go.